This is Sherry Boshert reporting for Global Medical News Network at the annual Congress of the European Society of Cardiology. American Heart Association President Dr. Gordon Tomaselli speaks with us about two studies of remote monitoring of ICDs. Did the results of these two studies surprise you at all? I think the results are pretty consistent with what we know from registry studies that have been done both in the United States and here in Europe. Uh, most of these devices, they're pretty sophisticated, have the capability for remote monitoring through radio frequency and transmission over wireless phone networks. This uh, is convenient for patients. It allows patients to be followed away from the hospital. We can interrogate many of the features and the diagnostics of their devices and uh, figure out what's been going on and actually prompt people to come back in and see the physicians if they need to for something that might be happening that the device has recorded. The results seem to support uh, data from registries in the United States about the safety and efficacy of home monitoring of ICDs, but these are uh, randomized control trials. What's the significance in the U.S. or in Europe? Well, I think um, registries are always good to generate the questions to ask. And I think the questions that were asked here is not only is it safe, is it efficacious, can you monitor people remotely as effectively as you can monitor them face to face, and is it cost efficient? Because you might imagine you'd get a lot of data from these uh, remote interrogations that somebody needs to look at, evaluate, and then get back to the patient. So it might require more in the way of infrastructure to support this. Interestingly, neither Evitel or eCost reported cost data today. Uh, that is pending. Um, will this change your practice at all, or are you going to wait for those cost analyses? Well, we use remote monitoring now for people who find it difficult to get back to our uh, arrhythmia center to be evaluated. So I don't think it's going to change things uh, too much in, in the way of what we do. Most of the monitoring that goes on will allow us to kind of follow people remotely and not see them as often as we might have to see them uh, face to face at the arrhythmia center. Now. For us, it's not such a big issue because oftentimes in the way this works in the United States is the, the patients generally have more than one doctor, so they'll have a primary care physician. Oftentimes they'll have a general cardiologist as well as an arrhythmia specialist who will help monitor their defibrillator. So if we can avoid them having to make multiple trips um, to the physician, that's all the better for them usually.